Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Thursday the 7th of August 2025. There's plenty to talk about today including rainfall that is expected to be heavy at times across central Queensland extending in towards the northeast of New South Wales. I've got a large northwest cloud band moving in across central Australia that's forecast to cause that rainfall and still some cold fronts across southwestern and southeastern Australia. All the details on these storms plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. Let's dive straight into it this morning. If you are new to the, to the channel then please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. But over in Queensland where we do have this northwest cloud band developing, that is going to be our top story of the day. We're expecting some pretty healthy rainfall accumulations to develop later this week into this weekend across the central Queensland coastline, particularly north of Harvey Bay through Agnes Water, Bundaberg, Rockhampton and Gladstone, those sort of areas. We're expecting some very healthy rainfall accumulations to develop there. Let's start off with the bigger picture first, and that is that rainfall uh, that is moving across central Australia this morning that's expected to move over in towards Queensland later today. And that's where the rainfall is then going to begin uh, starting off. So we've got a massive northwest cloud band that's been moving through interior parts of the nation over the past 48 hours or so, coming in from the Indian Ocean, and it's been providing some light rainfall here and there to parts of Western Australia's interior, and also to much of the southern half of the Northern Territory, and into parts of South Australia as well. Whilst rainfall observations haven't really painted the full picture because there's hardly anything out in this part of the Northern Territory, we have had some rel relatively decent rainfall accumulations between 5 to 15 millimetres spread out across the southern half of the state. And we're also looking at some of the rainfall now extending in towards the western half of Queensland with a few light showers crossing the border now into the Channel Country and I imagine that rainfall will only steadily increase from the, uh, throughout the remainder of today. Let's take a look at the forecast modelling right now and see what this is suggesting. So as you can see this rainfall moving in towards the southwestern corner of Queensland later today into this evening. We're not expecting anything heavy out there and to be honest I'd be surprised if places such as Bullia, Bedoria or Birdsville cop more than 5 millimetres. Rainfall will get a little bit heavier later tonight as it moves in towards the more centralised areas of Queensland as well. So uh, places such as Windora and Longridge we will likely see some heavy rainfall uh, developing later tonight into early tomorrow morning and falls there to the 9am tomorrow morning. Could be as high as 20 millimetres or so. Rainfall will then begin to properly build tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon across the central air, inland parts of Queensland, south of Longreach and Alpha, down towards Charleville and Attervale. And that's where we're going to see this southeasterly flow here off uh, coastal Queensland then really begin to pick up. And that's where the real rainfall is expected to develop for the central uh, Queensland coastline. This rainfall will really getting it set together through Friday night and into early Sunday morning and then Sunday morning we're expecting a proper convergence zone or a line of severe thunderstorms to develop offshore from the Queensland coastline and this is where the really solid rainfall is then expected to pick up. Uh, pick up. So just to recap on that, uh, light rainfall continuing throughout the remainder of today, extending to light to moderate rainfall early tomorrow morning and then moderate to heavy rainfall expected to begin developing across inland parts of Queensland around Longreach, uh, uh, Jericho, Claremont, Emerald, these sort of places through here and then moderate to heavy rainfall also expected expected through tomorrow afternoon and evening developing along the Queensland coastline between Rockhampton down to Harvey Bay, tending to heavy thunderstorms at times, potentially severe thunderstorms through Friday night into early Saturday morning before this rainfall gets dragged offshore after about midday on Saturday. Really good rainfall accumulations are still expected and as you can see on the rainfall accumulation forecast here, which takes a look at total accumulated precipitation between Friday and Saturday, you can see some really good numbers now beginning to develop, especially around Gladstone and Agnes Water, in particularly Agnes Water at this point in time. Falls offshore expected to be in excess of 100 millimetres of rainfall and the heaviest falls will likely remain offshore but we're still looking at falls between 50 to 125 millimetres developing onshore with the heaviest rainfall expected to be like I said between Gladstone down to Bundaberg in particular for Agnes Water at this point in time. Gladstone is looking at at least 50 millimetres, same deal with Bundaberg and Harvey Bay at this point in time and even the northern end of Fraser Island could also pick up 50 to 75 millimetres of rainfall and in fact the northern tippy top of Fraser Island could get up to 100 millimetres of rainfall because of their more offshore uh, kind of prominence here in the fact that the rainfall will be more dominant offshore. Good rainfall accumulations also expected to extend south into the Sunshine Coast with heavy falls also possible down towards Noosa. Falls up to 50 millimetres possible there and then rainfall begins to fall off a little bit as you get south of Noosa through Maroochydore and then down towards Coupletra where the uh, real rainfall then begins to ease off and uh, there's kind of a few showers pop up before southeast Queensland. Rainfall will also be quite healthy further inland as well. Out towards Mount Perry, Edisvold and Guyana we could be seeing falls as heavy as 50 millimetres and again inland towards Bilawila uh, uh, and and then as far north as Rockhampton, falls up to 50 millimetres are also possible. Falls up to 25 millimetres Friday night into Saturday morning are also possible up towards Ogmore and falls between 10 to 25 millimetres with isolated falls up to 50 millimetres are possible for locations that I'm about to mention now. Winton, Mutterborough, Longreach, Yarraka, Jericho, Tambo, Orcathella, Charleville, Adavale, Quilpie, Emerald, Rolleston, Injun, Claremont, Dingo, uh, like I said, Billawilla, and then down towards Eddisvold. All those locations have the more likely range of about 10 to 20 millimetres of rainfall with 
with an isolated chance, depending on what thunderstorms and showers move through, of up to 50 millimeters of rainfall in those areas. The chance of 50 millimeters is very remote, but it is still going to be there. Like I said, the heaviest rainfall around Agnes Water, that's kind of where we're expecting the ground zero to be for this rainfall here. It's not now expected to be rainfall. It's going to cause all sorts of major problems across this part of Queensland. And like I've said in previous forecast updates, this is the only part of Queensland that hasn't copped record-breaking rainfall at some point in the last 18 months, bar maybe a few locations into the northwest of the state. Uh, but this place here is really cooling out for a little bit of rainfall. So 75 millimetres will be very much welcome indeed, especially for coastal locations. So this is all in all good news here. And I don't think there's anything that's... Uh, you need to be worrying about in regards to flooding. Yes, there will be some pretty strong thunderstorms around. You can really see that Friday night into Saturday morning. We're expecting some concentrated bursts of heavy rainfall close to the coastline, if not offshore, uh, through Friday night into very early Saturday morning, most likely before about 7 or 8 o'clock when the rainfall is expected to then begin pulling offshore. So the risk of flash flooding is going to be there, and there could be some sharp rises to some of the rivers around Rockhampton and down towards Gladstone and Agnes Water, especially some of the smaller creeks adjacent to the coastline. Falls could spark some minor flooding in those locations but it'll be very short-lived. Flash flooding is going to be the main threat here. And I don't think this is a flooding event that's a, uh, worth worrying about at all. The other main threat from this uh, weather system here is going to be winds. We actually haven't looked at winds since I updated the colour scheme here a few days ago, but the pinks indicate gale force winds, and you can see gale force winds expected to develop around the low pressure systems convergence zone here. So some gusty winds are expected across Fraser Island, much of the Sunshine Coast, and then extending up north of Agnes Water through Gladstone and into the Wide Bay area. We'll likely see wind gusts, uh, winds averaging 40 to 60 kilometres an hour, with peak wind gusts as high as 110 kilometres an hour close to the coastline. Uh, and then further offshore, you can see maximum wind gusts are expected to be quite a bit stronger than that, really developing quite nicely throughout the day. We could be seeing wind gusts approaching 110 or even 120 kilometers an hour around this low pressure system as it then begins to pull further offshore through Saturday uh, daytime and into nighttime. But yeah, definitely some interesting stuff. This is going to be something to keep a very close eye on. Severe thunderstorms are also a possibility. The main threat there being gusty showers and heavy rainfall. I wouldn't be surprised if a few severe uh, thunderstorm warnings were issued and I also wouldn't be surprised if a severe weather warning for heavy rainfall was also issued for this part of Queensland. The key takeaways from this rainfall here is to stay safe stay dry. Not much to worry about at all. That, Like I said, the risk of flash flooding, it is there around Agnes Water and Gladstone through early Saturday morning, but it really isn't that extreme at all. And I wouldn't really be worrying about it at this point in time, but definitely something to keep in the back of your head and something to keep uh, in mind here with this rainfall coming through. It's definitely going to be the heaviest rainfall that they've seen in quite a few months. And for some locations, it could be the heaviest rainfall that they've seen uh, at this time of the year in quite a few decades. So definitely some unseasonably heavy rainfall for this time of the year and some good rainfall is expected as a result. Nothing more than 125 millimeters is expected either and i'm going to have more updates on this throughout the course of the day over on facebook so check me out over there but yeah it really is a dominant feature if we zoom out to the uh, to encompass all of australia it really is a dominant feature this rainfall band moving through the central parts of the nation this morning it's uh encompassing encompassing about 20 percent of the nation's land area it's absolutely huge that's for sure Let's move on in towards the southeast of the nation right now and by extension New South Wales where we've got a few showers moving through on the northern side of this high pressure system. Said high pressure system is situated over Tasmania this morning. It's been a very snowy one overnight across much of Tasmania and a cold start this morning as well. Not to mention windy down on that Syker Island as you'd expect from a weather system like this. Northwesterly is blowing at 80 kilometres an hour. Gusts up to about 100 to 110 kilometres an hour. Nothing out of the ordinary for them especially at this time of the year. That's what we would expect. And on the northern side of this high pressure system rotating around anti-clockwise around the system you can see some showers moving into the central uh, New South Wales coastline, into the Hunter region, and then into the mid-north coast. And that's expected to be a scene that we see on the forecast for the next couple of days. Showers moving through today, especially today, where falls could be as high as 30 millimetres through parts of the mid-north coast and the Hunter region. And then into tomorrow morning when showers will begin to ease off as they head further north into this state and into southeastern Queensland, which, by the way, Brisbane isn't expecting anything significant in the way of rainfall. But definitely for Tasmania and much of southeastern Australia, by extension, it is going to get cold, especially through from tomorrow morning onwards. We're expecting a pretty cold start across some of the higher elevations into New South Wales and Victoria. And you can really see that here on the uh, convective forecast models here. You can see the convective forecast models suggesting a very cold start early tomorrow morning across some of the higher elevations into New South Wales and Victoria. Well, they don't actually say it that clearly on this forecast outlook here. Minus five or minus six expected around Threadbow and Parishton Valley. Uh, temperatures will only get colder as well as we head further on into the weekend with Saturday expected to be one of the coldest days of the winter season across some of the higher elevations into 
into Victoria and New South Wales. Temperatures could tickle minus 10 degrees in a few locations on early Sunday morning. It's also going to be quite cold across Tasmania with fresh snow on the ground as well. It's going to feel even colder as well. So cold temperatures, plenty of clear skies expected as this high pressure system dominates the region over the next couple of days. It looks like the next winter weather system is actually going to come through much later on next week. We're not actually expecting any significant cold front activity until probably about Monday uh, night or Tuesday. Well, Monday night for South Australia and then in towards Tuesday for Tasmania and Victoria. And it's not really going to be a significant cold front either with a high pressure system quickly building behind it, which is going to give way to even more cool temperatures. And then a stronger cold front and weather system coming through on Friday the 15th of August by the looks of things. This one might pack a bit of a punch. And as that southern annual mode swings violently towards the positive again, uh, later on next week, we'll likely see some turbulent weather into the Tasman Sea between the 15th and about the 20th or the 21st of August, a high energy period developing there. That's my conjecture at this point in time. Things can change, but that is sort of what I'm looking at on the forecast modelling. So heads up for those around the Tasman Sea, New Zealand and Eastern Australia. A bit of trouble in the Tasman Sea, a bit of turbulent weather could be expected after Friday the 15th of August. Rainfall is expected to be uh, few and far between for South Australia and Victoria as well over the next 14 days. And you can see, especially over the next seven days, there's really not an awful lot of rainfall in the forecast. I'm trying to load it up right now, but you can see over the next seven days, rainfall barely 10 millimetres across a wide swathe of South Australia, barely five millimetres across a wide swathe of the Air Peninsula and then parts into Victoria as well. Rainfall is a little bit better across the west coast of Tas uh, Tasmania, but considering their exposed location, what more would you expect? New South Wales, in fact, is going to be a lot wetter than Victoria, South Australia, and even Tasmania, which is a bit unusual at this time of the year. Uh, rainfall is expected to be uh, kind of getting towards the southwest corner of Western Australia and then being pushed very far towards the south as it gets down there. Let's talk about the southwest of Western Australia right now. Some interesting stuff going over there in the next couple of days. We do have a stronger cold front coming through by the looks of things tomorrow night. We're going to see some showers and thunderstorms around the southwest capes. So whether or not it makes it up into the Perth metro area, looking a little bit touch and go, but a few showers expected around rush hour time for the Perth metro area. So take extra care on the roads and leave a few hours early if you can. Uh, it is a bit of a question right now as to whether or not the school run, school run will be a wet one, but it looks like the rain flu is going to come through after about three o'clock or so in the afternoon. Southwest Cape's likely to cop the brunt of the rainfall though, and then a few showers still moving through here and there through Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon, and then ahead of a strong cold front coming through uh, on Sunday for the Southwest Capes, we're going to see a pretty juicy rain band develop on Sunday and into Sunday. Very heavy falls are expected to be concentrated here and there around the Perth metro area, and by extension further north to Durian Bay and further south down to Bunbury. I think this is going to be one of those situations where we just see a line of rain uh, develop uh, offshore uh, due to favourable sea surface temperatures and thermodynamic conditions offshore from the Perth metro area, and that will just be pushed ashore and result in some pretty heavy rainfall accumulations here and there. In fact, forecast models are daring to suggest up to 50 millimetres of rainfall. I think that's a little bit bullish at this point in time, but definitely at least 40 millimetres expected to come in from this rain band here at somewhere, uh, at some location, either the lower west or the southwest land division. I'd be interested to see exactly where that heavy rainfall is expected to be right now. It looks to be through the Perth metro area, especially through the southern suburbs, but uh, based off precedence, I'd say the heaviest falls will likely be somewhere between uh, dwelling up or Serpentine, extending north to about Bickley through the Perth Hills. Rainfall will then begin to ease off through late Saturday night into early Sunday morning, with a few showers still persisting here and there through Sunday, and then it will clear up for next week. Bosses weather once again ensuing for the southwest corner of Western Australia. Another cold front coming through on the 14th, that will then go over and towards southeastern Australia and give them a bit of a hit down there and some much needed rainfall. And then another stronger cold front coming through on the 20th, but as we uh, just talked about just then, with a positive southern annular mode, all of these storms are going to be kept much further towards the south, and that's going to result in less rainfall across southwestern Australia. And that's kind of why southwestern Western Australia had that heavy rainfall coming through. And it was mainly just on Saturday. Apart from that, two or three weather systems over the next two weeks, definitely a little bit quieter than usual for what we would expect at this time of the year. August was also always going to be a little bit drier than average, uh, a little bit drier than what we have been looking at over the last couple of months across the southwest corners of Western Australia, uh, but I didn't really expect it to end up being this dry. It definitely looks like we're going to really kick into this dry phase, apart from the rainfall coming through Saturday for the Perth metro area, especially into the southern suburbs, uh, but beyond that, it doesn't look like there's an awful lot of rainfall coming through across much of southern Australia into the next 14 days at this point in time. Have a look at it. There's not an awful lot to be talking about, that's for sure. And that's going to basically do it for today's forecast update. I've talked about plenty. If you have found it enjoyable or informative and preferably both, then please you consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Well, that was one thing that I wanted to, uh, to talk about. Look at the shadow that uh, Tasmania has spoken through the clouds here. It's not unusual for Tasmania to stick out like a sore thumb on the satellite imagery, but have a look at this. It's really creating a bit of a shadow here with some clearer, dry conditions on the eastern side of the state as all of that cloud coming through on the western side of the state gets blocked up by the mountains and the hills onto the west coast. It really is quite a sight to see, that's for sure. 
Shore and you can really see it as we zoom right out to encompass all of Australia. And it's kind of the only place in Australia where this sort of phenomenon is uh, is visible on the satellite imagery. And it's a phenomenon called the rain shadow effect where the mountains really do block that rainfall coming through and that cloud activity coming through uh, from those westerly winds. And uh, you can see that the east coast remains dry. And that is a perfect example of why the east coast is much drier than usual compared to the west coast if it wasn't for uh, those mountains across there we'd probably have a more even rainfall spread across Tasmania we definitely would but anyways that is going to do it for today's forecast update if you have enjoyed it or found it useful then please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already a special shout out to the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now and again I could not only show without them so of course their support is as always much appreciated uh, click the join button down below as well to become a channel sponsor it's the best way to financially support the Cyclone Souls channel and that's going to be all for me today and I'll catch you on the next storm goodbye